and welcome to Wayne Trace High School for tonight's matchup between the Shawnee Indians and the Wayne Trace Raiders. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Danny Holbrook. And Danny, we got a good matchup tonight against two teams coming off of big conference victories last night. They're trying to keep that momentum going into tournament time. Yeah, it's all about momentum, Nate. When you look at last night, both these teams had big conference wins. You know, Canton and Paulding, big rivalries for both these schools. And it's all about momentum tonight. You don't typically prepare for a Saturday night game all week long. You get Saturday walkthroughs. So both teams are going to try to keep that momentum going, as you said. Let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game, starting first for the Shawnee Indians. Yeah, for Shawnee, they need perimeter defense. They need to get out on the guards. They need to stop those shooters. They need to get high hands and low feet. Don't let them get to the rim. Secondly, they need to defend the lane. It goes hand in hand with the perimeter defense. They need to keep them out of the lane. They'll go to the rim and they'll get easy buckets. And lastly, they need to quiet the crowd. This is a big gym, but these people can get really loud. Uh, and what do the Wayne Trace Raiders need to do to come away with the victory? For Wayne Trace, they need to control Austin Miller. Austin Miller can get to the rim. He can get to, you know, he can get his rebounds. He can get second shots. They just need to control the flow of the game with him. Secondly, they need to win the free throw line. It's, it's easier said than done, but if you get more shots and you go to the line more, you're going to score easy buckets. And lastly, Wayne Trace needs to hold serve. This is their home court. It's a Saturday night game. you got to win this game. The crowd's filing in here at the Palace. It was Hall of Fame night. Both of these teams looking for a Hall of Fame performance. When we return, we'll have tonight's starters in the opening tip on WOSN. Welcome back. We are here at the Palace of Wayne Trace High School. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpawk, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Homestyle, happens here. Starting lineups are being announced, starting first with the Indians. And they're going to start number 23, the freshman Beckett Berkey. Number four, Dominic Lynch. Number 12, Austin Miller. Number zero, Will McBride, and number five, Toby Freiberger. Take a look at the Wayne Trace Raiders. They are going to start number 40, Kyle Stoller. Number five, Tanner Lockoff. Number 24, Tyler Davis. Number 20, Brooks Lockoff. And number three, Hudson Myers. Tonight's officials, Dustin Hug, Jeremy TG, and Joshua Andrews. Nate Garlock alongside Danny Holbrook. And, you know, these, I love these kinds of intros, Danny. Lights are low, music's up, crowds into it. You got all the fans, all the students on the floor. They have the tunnel. Get into it. That's how you get a Saturday night game going. Yeah, this is a beautiful facility. You come up here and there's plenty of space, and they do it right up here. And these starting lineups and get the kids involved, the crowd. And this is what high school basketball in the state of Ohio is about. We're going down the tournament trail. Everybody's getting pumped. As you talk about the tournament trail is the end of the regular season is right around the corner. Last night, um, as you, and as we get that, you have some big games coming up towards last night, no exception. Wayne Trace, a big conference matchup over in, up in Paulding, just down the road, up 127. A huge rivalry between these two. Paulding back in the GMC for the first time in a long time. Had already wrapped up that conference title. We're trying to go for the undefeated season. Wayne Trace goes into Paulding last night, comes away with a huge victory. Brooks Lockoff absolutely went off in the first half. Had 25 points, six three-pointers. Brooks Lockoff may be one of the best uh, Pull up jump shooters, catch and shoot that we have seen in quite some time. Well, in in my look, in my top ten, he is in the top ten of, of the best players in Northwest Ohio. That kid can create his own shot. He can come off screens. He can get to the rim. He's a five tool player, a four tool player, I should say. He can score. He can dribble. He can rebound. And he can. I mean, he can do it all. <laughs> he really can. And then on the other side, Shawnee last night, a big win against Kenton, getting that WBL victory. Always good. Shawnee kind of has, has an up and down season so far, but as they come up towards the end of this season. Things look like they're trying to start righting that ship a little bit, getting a little bit more consistent on offense and hoping to ride that wave here in Wayne Trace tonight. Well, you know, they've lost seven of eight, but this team won six in a row at one time this year. They're, you know, up and down. But look, Mark Triplett is a heck of a coach. They've got good athletes. This is going to be a really good game. And what I like about Shawnee when you've seen them is they compete. Even if even through the bumps and the roads and the sure. ups and downs, they have been looking better. They've been getting a little bit more consistent offensively as far as the scoring goes. It's been some of the other things like that right there. You see an early turnover. You know, not as the crisp, crisp of a passage. You'd like to see a little bit 
telegraph that one, an easy turnover to start the game. Yeah, well, you know, this is the time where on a Saturday night you see who's got the legs and who doesn't have the legs. They both had tough games last night. I'm telling you, Saturday night games on the road are tough, and both these teams are really going to have to put a lot of effort into this game. Tyler Davis going to pull up for three. That one's going to be short. Good save by Tanner Lockoff. Ends up back in the hands of Davis, but he can't get it to go. Beckett Berkey comes up with the rebound. McBride pushes it up ahead to Miller, gets it back to Berkey as Shawnee works it around the perimeter. Dominic Lynch trying to find somewhere to go with it, tried to get over the upstretched arms of Brooks Lockoff. Lockoff able to get his fingertips on it, takes it all the way in for two. There you saw that athleticism made as he goes to the rim and he switches hands and he goes up. He can really get off the floor. Lockoff almost got jumped into the passing lane there. As Shawnee, a third straight turnover to start the game. Hudson Myers going to drive against Austin Miller, try to go up and under. That one's no good. Toby Freiberger comes up with the rebound. Well, and look, you're seeing some really soft passes right now by Shawnee. You wonder if last night's game didn't take anything out of it. But on the other side, you're seeing Wayne Trace with active hands. They're moving their feet, and they're getting the hands in the air. That is four straight turnovers for the Indians as Tyler Davis spins into the lane, able to get that one to go. And Coach Triplett not happy with the offensive effort here in the early going, and he wants to take the 30-second timeout. Yeah, you saw him. He's pretty animated right now. And they, he is fired up. He knows how important this game is. Not just to, you know, look, it's not a conference game, but it still is a game on the road against a perennial power. He wants to come up here and show himself, and he wants to get these kids ready for the tournament. And right now they're playing awful sloppy. And Coach Triplett not happy with the effort. It's, see the kids kind of come out, and they're just kind of, you know, a little lazy with the sure. passes. Yeah. I mean, it's really the best way to put it. That is how you, and, you're absolutely you know, right. And you know, Wayne Trace being very active defensively, getting their hands up, getting into those passing lanes, have come up with four straight turnovers. So we'll see if the pep talk from Coach Triplett worked as Shawnee now has an opportunity on offense down 4 nothing. Well, you saw, you see the length of Wayne Trace, and they've got 6'4", six, 6'3", six, six foot across the line, and they've got long arms, and they're active, and they're moving their feet. That's the important thing, and they're getting their hands in the air. Three-pointer on his way by Beckett. Beckett can't connect. We're going to have a foul. This one's going to go on Hudson Myers. It will be the first foul for Myers and the first team foul for Wayne Trace. Beckett Berkey's a good-looking freshman. His dad, Nick Berkey, was a, a great player at Ohio Northern at Marion Local, and uh, this young man's going to be a really good player. He's going to have to get stronger, and he's going to have to put the ball on the, on the floor a little bit, but he's going to be a really nice player. Austin Miller going to work in the middle through three different defenders. Had to get through a little bit of contact there as well and able to get that one to go down for two. And that's exactly what I talked about in the pregame. You've got to keep Austin Miller off the board. If you get second-chance points, he can kill you with those shots. Now here's Stoller with the turnaround. That one's no good. Berkey with the nice box out, but then threw it away. And a good heads up play by Brooks Lockoff to bounce that one out of bounds off of Freiburger. Look, if you're teaching kids how to box out, what Beckett Berkey just did is, is a clinic right there. He did a great job. He got low, he spreads his arms out, and his shoulders got wide, and he did a great job of boxing him out. Right now, Wayne Trace with just a little bit more energy than Shawnee. Lockoff, catch and shoot, good. And this is what he did so successfully last night, and quite frankly, what he's done successfully all year. How many kids can come off a screen like that, set their feet, square their shoulders up, and he's got perfect form? Right now, this zone defense from Wayne Trace is causing Shawnee all sorts of issues. Tanner Lockoff's going to get fouled, and he's going to go to the free throw line. Well, Toby Freiberger didn't get back in time, and he compounds the problem by fouling on the shot. And you're just, you know, and look at Triplett. He's bringing five new kids in off the bench. He is fired up right now, Nate. Not happy with the effort from his starters as they can't quite figure out that zone as Wayne Trace was getting into it. They're trying to go into it. Wayne Trace able to knock that ball away on every possession except for one. And now we're going to have five new players come into the game and We'll see if they can get a little new energy for the Indians. Well, he's sending a real clear message right here, a real clear message. And, and, and it looks like he's, you know, he, he's not being mean. He, he's teaching these kids, look, you've got to put effort into this game, and you've got to do better than what you've done. So Tanner Lockoff able to connect on both of his free throws. It's now an 8-2 lead for the Raiders. Keegan Wilson throws that one away as he was trying to find Nick Pazon. Coach Triplett right now just trying to search for some answers. Not happy, a little 
a little upset with his team as far as this effort and the early going. And it's got to be frustrating, especially coming off a game where they played so well last night. Yeah, I got a big win over Kenton. And, I, and when I say a big win, it was a 30-point win. And look, the best motivator right now for high school kids is the bench. They're going to have to understand if you want to get off that bench, you've got to play hard. Boston Barker with the nice block from behind. Doesn't get whistled for it. Ends up out of bounds. Stays with Wayne Trace. Lockoff pulls up one more time. Three-point shot by Brooks Lockoff. And this is starting to look like his line from last night. Did you see how square his shoulders were? He was right on line with the rim. Kept his head up. Has really nice form. Three-point shot on its way and good. And a big answer for Shawnee. Nick pays on. They needed that in the worst way. Look at that. Another one. That's a good sign for Shawnee because what you don't want is Brooks Lockoff to feel like he can't miss. And if he if those keep going in, he just becomes that much more dangerous and he will continue to shoot those. And with that first miss, a little bit of breathing room for Shawnee. What I like about Nick Pazan, he brings energy. He's a nice player. He's going to hustle hard for you. That's exactly what they needed. They needed a good shot like that, and that's going to fire the rest of these kids up. If they get a bucket right here, they're right back in this thing, Nate. So a little bit of a stoppage here, getting some things squared away with the clock. And Shawnee will have the basketball. Wayne Trace has shown a little bit of pressure here in the early going. It's caused Shawnee a little bit of problems as Wilson run, brings it up. Going to run that 1-2-2 two, two half court trap, try to get the wings, get the ball. Nice job by Shawnee to get the ball to the middle, and they're going to reset the offense. So now Wilson trying to direct traffic. Bazon with another three. That one's no good. Barker comes up with a big rebound. Gabus sends the three-point try off the front of the rim. Wilson with the hustle effort. Flew in to get it, but ended up landing out of bounds. That's okay. I like the effort. I love what those kids are doing right now. And Coach Triplett told his starters, boys, you get another chance. Here we go. So the original starting five back in for Shawnee. And we'll see if they have come back in with a little bit more life. I can promise you this. If they don't, <laughs> they won't be on the floor long. Kale Winans checks, has checked in for Wayne Trace. As Tanner Lockoff moves around, gets it into the hands of Brooks Lockoff. Winans finds Tanner down in the corner. His three-point try, no good. Miller can't come up with the rebound. Kale Winans gets it, can't get that put back. And finally, Austin Miller comes up with it. He comes with a full head of steam, tries to get to the rim with the left hand, no good. And fight for the loose ball ends up into the hands of Wayne Trace. There you saw what Austin Miller can do for you when he can rebound the basketball and bring the ball down the floor. That was just uh, that, that was just Wayne Trace getting back in a quick way right there. Tanner Lockoff went right in to Dominic Lynch and was able to get it up over him for two. Berkey down in the corner, works against Davis. Tried to go baseline, gets cut off. Here comes Freiberger flying in through the lane. A little bit of hesitation, but it has it blocked. Well, a nice job by Freiberger to recognize what the defense was giving him. He goes down the lane and he gets the ball. He just misses a shot. Davis finds Stoller down low. He goes into Berkey, and it looks like they're going to call Berkey for the foul. No, it's actually going to go on Will McBride. That'll be his first, and it'll be the second for the Indians. They've got Dominic Lynch right now uh, guarding. I'm watching, the, I'm watching the replay there. Uh, they've got him guarding Brooks Lockoff, which is a good matchup because he's really good athletes. Winans three-pointer falls short. Beckett Berkey comes up with the rebound, moves it ahead to McBride. Will going to try to go baseline behind the back, fighting through some traffic, drops it off. Berkey can't handle the pass, but gets it over to Freiberger. Freiberger's three-pointer no good over the backboard and it'll go back to Wayne Trace. Well, McBride did a great job there. He went baseline. He was underneath the basket. I really wish he would have took that shot, and I, and I understand what he was doing. He was trying to get the open shot, but, son, you're underneath the basket. You're going to get fouled, make it or miss it, and two or three are good. So Shawnee trying to get another stop here defensively. Wayne Trace moves it around the perimeter. Brady Mill Miller's come in for Wayne Trace. Lockoff, another three-point try. This one goes down. The third three-pointer of the quarter for Brooks Lockoff. Somebody's hot. <laughs> Somebody's really hot right now. Lockoff is really hot. Dominic Lynch gets cut off, has to reverse, gets it back into the corner. Freiberger now trying to go into the lane. Wayne Trace playing in that zone defense. Shawnee trying to find some gaps. McBride can't connect, has that one taken away by Brooks. 
Lock off. Going to throw it ahead, trying to find Brady, a cutting Brady Miller. Miller had slowed down. That one goes out of bounds, and it will go back to the Indians. It, it, look, it's not that Shawnee's not getting the ball in the paint. They're getting the ball. They're getting baseline. They're getting to the rim. They're just turning the ball over right now. They've got to be strong, but they've got to be patient. Everything's going 100 mile an hour right now. Don't worry about it. Just get the ball to the rim. And right now with this zone that Wayne Trace continues to show on them. Well, they're three. not going to come out of it until they prove they Absolutely. can Absolutely. Yeah. They're going to have to probably shoot their way out of this or try to spread them out and get into the middle. Austin Miller had it there in the middle, but pass it right back out. Good find. Lynch under the basket gets it to go down. That's exactly what they need to do. Either do that or Austin Miller, when he catches the ball in the middle, needs to go up strong. Nice job moving out the basketball by Dominic Lynch. Got himself wide open along that baseline and able to finish. 16-7, 125 left to go here in the opening quarter. Tanner Lockoff works up top. And here's Stoller. Stoller hands it off. Winans looking to get out of trouble. The Indians defense playing tight right now. And Shawnee right now needs to make up some ground. They've got Brooks Lockoff on the bench. This is a great time for Shawnee if they can get a defensive stop to go down and get a bucket and close the gap. Three-pointer on its way. Tanner Lockoff no good. Berkey comes up with the rebound. Freiberger passes it up ahead to McBride. McBride gets that one up off high off the glass. A tough shot, and Will McBride gets it to go down for two. Yeah, that's a great job by Will McBride of, of recognizing the, that he needed to run the floor, and he gets down on the left side, gets to the bucket. And I said that earlier. Once he gets to the bucket, he's strong enough to score. You know, and Shawnee's still down, but I will tell you what, the starting five definitely looks Absolutely. like the message that yeah. Coach Triplett sent to them was received. They have come in with a new energy. They're moving better. They're moving without the basketball better. Passes look better. You know, and they've well, been they're able running the floor, too. Yeah. Absolutely. 20 seconds to go. Winans. So Wayne Trace looks like they may try to hold for the final shot. Tanner Lockoff changes direction, goes to the opposite floor. Going to work around the screen. Has to get rid of it. Stoller, he's open for three. That one's no good. Berkey with the rebound. Five seconds to go. Up ahead to Miller. Austin works against Stoller. Nice change of direction for two as Austin Miller gets an impressive basket at the buzzer. Nate, that was a great job of Austin Miller not settling for a jump shot. He looked at the clock. He knew he could get there. That's a fantastic job by the senior. Shawnee is closed within five. The first quarter has come to an end. When we return, we'll have the second on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. So second quarter just about underway here at the Palace. Nate Garlock alongside Danny Holbrook. And Shawnee got off to the rough start, Danny. We talked about it a lot, especially in the early going. Coach Triplett brings them out, sends in five brand new players. They did a nice job when they were in as well. When the starters returned, they were finally able to chip away at that lead and got it within five right there at the end of the quarter. Yeah, well, Nick Paisan hit the big three to get the momentum started. Shawnee got a couple stops on defense, and then they did the right thing. They started going to the rim. Get an easy shot. Get an easy shot. Go to the free throw line. We talked about that pregame. Make this game a little easier. Wayne Trace begins with the basketball here in the quarter. Berkey just takes it right away from Winans. Here's Austin Miller. McBride tries to drive Lockoff, able to get his hands on it. And then it was Clemens who took it away. Lockoff tries to go all the way in. A great catch up by Toby Freiberger to get in there. Knock that one out of bounds. Toby Freiberger did a good job. And he's running hard. And he's playing hard right now. The message has been sent to these kids. And they are really playing hard. Wayne Trace going to keep the basketball. As Kale Winans will take it out of bounds for the Raiders. Brooks Lockoff trying to come free. Not able to do it. So a long inbounds goes to Stoller. Now Wayne Trace going to let the offense get set one more time. Nick pays on back into the game for the Indians. Guards lock off. Now here's Brooks working against Gavis. Pulls up for the free throw line. That one's no good. Brady Gavis has got a tough assignment. <laughs> He's got a real tough assignment. Berkey looking for a little bit of help. Finally finds it. Shoney trying to close this lead. Here's Miller, down into the corner, pays on. He's going to let the three-pointer go. That one's no good. Tanner Lockoff with the rebound. 
He's Shawnee on. right now here in the early going, a lot of one and duns, not not having too much success on the offensive boards. Yeah, Payson was in a good shot or a good spot to take that shot. He rushed his shot. He didn't get his feet set. As soon as he caught it, he tried to get it up as quick as he could. He's got to learn when the ball comes down, just set your feet, square your shoulders, and take your shot. Turn around, a hook with the right hand for Stoller. Nice put up, two more for him. 18 to 11. Here's Paison one more time. As Shawnee works it around the perimeter, trying to find some spots in that zone defense. I'd like to see Toby Freiberger step up a little bit because when he gets that ball, they're not coming out to respect his shooting. Step up in the lane there a little bit. Extra pass from Berkey to Paison. He can't connect, fight for the loose ball. Looked like Gabe has had a chance that time, but Kyle Stoller takes it away. Well, you miss those shots in, the, in a game like this. Like I, like I said, a Saturday night game, when you miss those shots, it just puts so much pressure on your defense. Kyle Stoller going to work down low again. They're going to have a foul. Let's see who this one goes on. Officials work their way over the scorer's table. It was on the rebound, yeah. It's going to go against number 22, I believe. So Carter Clemens picks up his first. It's a team's third. Keegan Wilson checking back into the game for Shawnee. A couple of substitutions for Wayne Trace as well as Hudson Myers is back into the game, as is Tyler Davis. Quick pass inside to Berkey. Berkey let go of that one a little quick, I think, and ends up high off the glass. Rebound comes down to Wayne Trace. Well, that, yeah, excuse me, that's three shots in a row, Nate, that they've rushed their shots. So they're trying to see if they can't find some soft spots in that zone yeah. and get to that inside, but it's forcing up some quick shots. And so Wayne Trace will live with those. Clemens almost had that one poked away, but able to gather it back in. Davis was trying to find Lockoff on the back door, ends up just handing it off to him. Tanner Lockoff, he's going to drive, kicks it out. Clemens, that shot's no good. Davis comes up with the rebound, though. Lockoff one more time, gets it off to Davis. Tyler Davis with the jump shot. There you saw what offensive rebounding can do for you. Multiple shots at the offensive end, especially when you're down. That's just demoralizing to a defense right there. So back out to a nine-point lead, but Brady Gabus, a big three-point answer for the Indians. Gabus can knock down shots like that. The 6'2 senior, he's, he's, he's a good shooter when he gets his feet set. Here's Lockoff, pulls up for three. That one short. I think Gabus might have got his hands on that one. That's a great job defending that shot. Wilson in the corner, trying to look through the double team, has it taken away. Well, you saw there Brady Miller just, or excuse me, uh, Keegan Wilson just got caught up double team down low. So the Indian defense doing a nice job getting some stops on the last possessions and trying to get the offense going. Two possession game, four minutes left to go in the half. Wilson. Coach Triplett is screaming at his kids to get the ball to the middle of the floor. You see Berkey getting open, and they're, they're looking at him, but they're not getting the ball down low. Here's Austin Miller for three. That one's going to be short. Tyler Davis with another rebound. Another one-and-done shot for the Indians as Tanner Lockoff slows things down for the Raiders. Coach Triplett realizes you're only down six. A bucket right there gets you to four. Keeps you right in this thing. Austin Miller got caught leaning, and Hudson Myers gets all the way to the basket for two. Miller kicks it back out. Thought about driving for a minute, but that Wayne, Wayne Trace defense recovered quickly and closed all those gaps. Well, I can promise you what Coach Triplett will do at halftime. They're going to have to go over this zone defense, and they're going to have to figure out a way to get the ball towards the rim because they're doing a lot of standing around right now. Directions coming from the vents of Sean Eek, Egan Wilson trying to direct traffic. Shawnee looking for something to lock off Red that all the way, was able to jump it. He's going to take it in for an easy two. Soft pass on the sidelines. That's going to happen every time with an athlete like Lockoff. He's going to get that every time. Miller has to get rid of it. Extra pass to Wilson. Wilson, he's going to drive. And we're going to have a foul on the floor. Well, Wilson did a great job of penetrating in that zone. And he found Austin Miller in the soft spot. He has to stop, stop the play early. Tanner Lockoff gets whistled for that foul. It's his first. Some more substitutions coming in. Dom Lynch, Toby Freiberger, and 
Will McBride all coming back in for the Indians. And Brady Miller coming in for Wayne Trace. I like the way Coach Triplett uses his bench. They'll go 7, 8, 9, 10 deep, and I like that. Keep those kids fresh. Ten-point lead. But Shawnee trying to get things going here offensively. Here's Lynch. Shawnee right now just moving things around the top, trying to see if they can't get the defense out of position. But Wayne Trace doing a great job. Well, As Freiberger tried to force that one in the middle to Berkey, it gets picked away, and then Freiberger get whistled for the foul. Against his own defense, the ball's got to move, Nate. The ball's got to move back and forth. You got and you said it best. The, the defense has to be forced out of position with the ball movement. And if you're not cutting to the rim with the ball movement, you're, you're not going to do anything effective with that offense. I know that sounds elementary, but that's, that's yeah, you've got to move the ball. So another empty possession for the Indians. Wayne Trace back on offensively. Stoller, he's going to get to the rim. No good. Berkey comes up with the rebound. Going to push it ahead. Here comes McBride. Gets it over to Gavis. Gavis tries to go baseline, loses the basketball. Lockoff works against Berkey. Going to go all the way in, gets another two. He gets to the rim as well as anybody I've seen this year. He, he's got long strides. He's athletic. He can jump out of the gym. He can really change the way you play defense. Right now, Shawnee offense just looking a little stagnant. But they're not 100% sure where they need to go with it. Gavis almost has that one taken away. Able to gather it back in. Freiburg with the basketball now. Do you see when the ball's on the floor, the hands movement from Wayne Trace, and they're moving their feet, and they're getting in really good position to defend it? Brady Gavis with another three-pointer. He now has two here in the quarter, trying to keep the Indians in this one. Yeah, Brady Gavis is doing a nice job of finding his spot. Under a minute left to go here in the first half. Hudson Myers with the basketball. Trying to find Stoller down low, finally get it to him. He works against Lynch. Stoller. Loves that turnaround with the right hand. Gets it up and in as Berkey came around, and he's going to pick up the foul. Yeah, you saw Berkey swipe at his hands, and once he swiped at his hands, he went across his body. They're going to call that every time. You see right here when he goes on the back side of him, watch his hands right across his, his arms. They're going to call that every time. Kyle Stoller going to make a trip to the free throw line to try to get the and one. As Tanner Lockoff comes back into the game for Wayne Trace. Beckett Berkey's having a great year as Kyle Stoller gets the first one to go down. But people have to remember, he is a freshman. They're going to be learning sure. curves. There are going sure. to be things that happen that, you know, you can't fix unless you get those varsity minutes. And, and those are those are those types of things right there. Absolutely. And, and, and he'll understand that. He'll, he'll work hard, and he'll, he's going to be a really nice player for this program. So this one's going to go against Brooks Lockoff as Will McBride was able to hold on to that basketball, and he'll get fouled. Shawnee will take it out underneath their basket. And I agree with you. I think Beckett Berkey is going to be an excellent basketball player. He's going to be something special for this Indian team. And, you know, sometimes as coaches it can get frustrating, but you know you have to go through some growing pains. Absolutely. Even, even this late in the season, sure. you know, that he's had a lot of time. There, there are still going to be growing pains. And now you see Wayne Trace, uh, Tanner Lockoff is coming out farther when uh, when Gabus was standing up top, and every time he moves, they're watching where he goes. He's knocked down two threes. So Shawnee looking for a little bit of momentum going into the locker room down 29-17. Four seconds left to go. Long three-pointer by Freiberger. That one's going to be off. Tip in no good, and the first half is going to come to a close. Wayne Trace has the 12-point lead as they head to the locker room there on top, 29-17. We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back to the Palace at Wayne Trace High School. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So third quarter just about underway. Nate Garlock alongside Danny Holbrook. And Danny, 
Shawnee took a long time there in the locker room. What do you think that message was? Well, I think he told his kids, look, the, the effort's just not there. Uh, I understand if you're getting beat, you know, like we're getting beat, if, if you play hard. If you give me 100% and you get beat, there's nothing you can do. But they're not giving 100%. They didn't even come out and warm up. They, they stayed in the locker room the entire time. Let's just see if they get the message. So Shawnee begins with the basketball here in the third quarter. Lynch up top as Wayne Trace is going to stay in that 3-2 zone. Lockoff able to get his hands on that. And that's what that 3-2 zone can do. They're doing that because that frees Lockoff to be able to jump those passing lanes like that. And it's worked several times tonight, almost worked again. Well, Nate, you saw Dominic Lynch when he brought the ball to the left side. He's got to go towards that man to get him to come to the ball. And then you did the bounce pass. You can't try to you know, throw the pass without that guy moving. So Just Brooks little Lockoff. things they can do, you know. Yep, and Brooks Lockoff that time doesn't jump the pass, but able to reach around, poke that one away from Lynch, ends it back into the hands of the Raiders. Hudson Myers now brings it up. As Tanner Lockoff runs down, gets it into the corner, gets the basketball back. He's going to let the three-pointer fly. He didn't get challenged on that one. Had a good look at it, but can't get it to go down. You got to close out. You, you got to get out there and respect the shoot. You watched what they did in the first half, and look what Coach Triplett's doing. He's recognizing that they did not even go out, and, and, and I, I don't blame him. So Brady Gabus coming back into the game here early in the third quarter. Tanner Lockoff brings it up for the Raiders. Wayne Trace on top, 29-17, just underway here in the second half. Brooks gets rid of it. Going to try to fight through some screens. Stoller comes open for three. That one's going to be no good. Freiberger comes up with a rebound. Toby pushes up ahead to Gavis. Gavis is going to drive. Can't get that one to go in. Going to have a fight for the loose ball. Tie up. Jump ball called, and possession arrow is going to favor Wayne Trace. And, and Nate, I know we've sounded critical about the Shawnee kids right now because we realize what they can do. We realize how athletic they are, what they can do offensively and defensively when they play hard. But right now, they're just not giving you the effort that you need. Lockoff almost has that one taken away as Austin Miller is able to get his hands on it. Wayne Trace able to recover. Brooks passes it back out as Wayne Trace showing some patience here on this possession. Hudson Myers thought about the three-pointer but takes it down baseline as Tyler Davis came all the way in completely unguarded. He has a wide open look at it and cashes it in for two. Yeah, nobody checked him when he came down the middle. You got to recognize the defense and you got to see when he goes to the middle to the rim, he's standing in front of the rim. Freiberger's going to let the three-pointer go. That one can't go down. Fight for the loose ball. Freiberger ends up with it. Good find down low. Brady Gabe's a he was able to get that one to go down for two, and Shawnee's going to take the timeout. Looks like it's going to be a full timeout for Shawnee, so we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. So it was just a 30-second timeout taken by the Indian as Coach Triplett wanted to get his team together after that made basket, trying to get things going the right way for the Indians. Well, it's a great job by Toby Freiberger of corralling the ball. And as soon as he looked up, he found the open man, and he put a dart down on the post. So a really nice job. Maybe that's the momentum builder they need. 5.56 left to go here in the third. As Tanner Lockoff brings it up for Wayne Trace. Wayne Trace done a nice job moving the offense through different players tonight. As you know, we talked a lot about Brooks Lockoff and what he's capable of doing offensively, but after that first quarter, it's been pretty much everybody else. Yeah, they do a nice job of moving the ball around. Hudson Myers, nice fake pass, gave himself open, but can't connect. And you see Stoller tip it over to Davis. Davis goes up. He's going to get fouled. Go to the free throw line for the and one. Well, there you saw another instance where the shooter was completely wide open. You watch here on the replay. Nobody contested him, and they're compounding him the problem by getting second and third shots. So that one actually went off the side of the rim. So Davis going to the free throw line. He's going to shoot two. First shot is up and good. Tyler Davis, 6'4", senior, big body. Nice left-handed stroke there. 
Second shot he leaves short. Berkey comes up with the rebound. Austin Miller tracks it down. Does a great job of looking off the defense, but good, good recovery that time as looked like Gabus was going to have an easy layup. A nice job defensively of getting back and recovering that ball. That one ends up being passed right to Will McBride. McBride goes with the left. Gabus works against the baseline, spins back into the lane, back into some traffic as he went, tried to split Stoller and Davis, and he's going to get fouled. I like the effort there by Gabus. He understood what he had. He was double teams. He goes to the left side, and he takes the ball up as strong as he can. A little bit of emotion there, but he still gets the foul. Hey, that's a great way to get back in the ball game. We talked about it pregame. Get to the foul line, get some easy buckets. And here's the other thing, too. The clock stopped. Brady Gabus not able to connect on the first free throw. As Kyle Stoller was the one that was charged with that foul, his first, team's first of the half. Gabus able to connect on the second. Back down to a 12-point lead. Wayne Trace on top, 32-20. to 20. Great jump by Gabus as he has come in and given Shawnee some life, a different kind of energy. He's working hard. Miller's three-pointer. Rattles in and then back out. Loose ball ends up in the hands of Stoller. Miller had a nice shot there. He was completely wide open. They didn't come out and, and contest that shot. It's going to be a blocking foul. This one's going to go against Gabus. As Gabus picks up his first of the game. And Nate, you know, we talk a lot here on WSN. On all of our broadcasts, and I'm sure our viewers have heard it a million times, defense travels. And when we talk about that, when you're having an off night offensively, like Shawnee is right now, that's when your defense has to play well. And if you play well defensively at home and on the road, good things happen. You don't have to score a lot of points. You know, and, and honestly, Shawnee's defense hasn't been that bad tonight. Sure. They've come up with some stops. They've gotten some turnovers. But it just, it's that, goes back to that consistency. Yep, you've exactly. got to be able to string it together. Yep, you've got to get two, three, and four stops. But you got to get a stop when you need one. That's the most important thing. You know, in the first half, they had that lead down to six, and they had the ball, couldn't get a bucket, but they couldn't get a stop, and you saw what Wayne Trace did. They moved that lead up to 12 by halftime. So Brooks Lockoffs get called with the offensive foul. That is his second of the game. So the basketball is going to go back to the Indians. Brooks Lockoff is a smooth player. He's got 15 tonight. He's just as smooth as, you know, anybody we've seen this year. Shawnee working around the perimeter. Try to go inside to Miller. Tried to get it to McBride. It gets tipped. Miller or McBride gets it back, but then has it rejected by Davis. Basketball will stay with Shawnee. Looks like McBride got a little too far under the basket on the left side. He'd have been well to just come back down and go straight back up once his man went in the air. So Freiberger going to trigger the inbounds. Shawnee now seeing a lot more ball fakes, trying to get the defense to move, trying to see if they can't get some things going, sending a couple of cutters, trying to go some quick passes. But Wayne Trace continuing to do a good job, but Brooks Lockoff just picked up his third foul. That's a big foul for, Lock for Wayne Trace. His Lockoff's got three, and you wonder, you just wonder if uh, if Coach Linder's going to keep him in the ball game. So it looks like he is, but at, what that would probably do is take away that wraparound game for Brooks Lockoff. We've seen that a couple of times. He's come around and poked it away from behind and They'll probably get away from that, not one to pick up his fourth foul. Shot on its way, no good. Berkey with the rebound, gets it up and in, and he's going to go to the free throw line to shoot the end one. Watch what the freshman can do. You know, we've done a lot of games this year, Nate, and, and, you know, hundreds of games. This is the first time all year I've seen a team stay in zone from the tip until the middle of the third quarter. They haven't came out of it. It has worked pretty successfully for them tonight, but Shawnee now with an opportunity to make this single-digit lead for the first time in a while. Well, you just wonder if last night's game at Paulding didn't take something out of their legs that maybe he's trying to save, you know, some, some energy by sitting back in that zone, and then, you know, Shawnee not proving they're going to come, they're going to force him out of it. Yeah, that's a great point. 3.40 left to go here in the third. It is a nine-point deficit. Shawnee hanging around. Winans back into the game. Gets it over to Stoller now. Wayne Trace has done a nice job with their ball movement here tonight. Davis just beyond the, the free throw line, and he's able to connect. Well, that was off ball action right there, Nate. You saw Lockoff go to the rim. As soon as he went to the rim, two Shawnee Indians go straight to the bucket, and then <laughs> the opposite man comes up and gets the ball. 
There's Austin Miller. He's going to drive. Goes to the left side. Can't get it to go in, but he'll make a trip to the free throw line. So Shawnee's doing what you mentioned. They're trying to get some baskets with the clock stopped, and it's going to keep them in this game. I'd like to see Austin Miller do more of that. He's athletic enough. You see this. He's got a nice move to the bucket. He just gets up and he misses, but he gets fouled, and he's so good at getting there. Just keep doing that, son. Miller lines up his first free throw, sends it, and it's good. Austin Miller with his first point since the first quarter. Makes this a 10-point game. He now has five on the night. Austin lines up the second shot. On its way and good. So now this is a critical juncture right now. They need to get stops. Just down nine here in the middle of the third. Here's Winan working along the perimeter. Finally gets it back into the hands of Lockoff as Brooks has been quiet here in the second half so far. Stoller finds Davis on the inside. He goes into Berkey. Can't get that one to go. Miller comes up with a big rebound. Austin runs the floor, gets it over to Wilson. Wilson, extra pass in the corner. Pays on for three. That one rattles out. Wilson comes up with the offensive rebound. Berkey, he's going to let the three-pointer go. That one rattles out. Both those shots were down. Both those shots looked like they were going to fall in the bucket, and they just come out spinning. That time, Shawnee doing just about everything right on offense is now Berkey's going to get whistled for the foul. Things that we've talked about, you know, they at times not moving without the basketball very well. They made the extra pass. They had wide open looks, as you're going to see on the Union Bank instant replay here, the foul as Stoller works against Berkey. Two clean shots, they get the offensive rebound, but still can't get it to go down, and that's got to be frustrating. Very real frustrating, because those kids did. The sequence of offensive events right there should have been in favor of Shawnee. It should have been a three on either of those buckets. Stoller able to connect on his first free throw to push us back out to a 10-point game. Brady Miller comes into the game for Winans. Uh, Tyler Davis and Brooks Lockoff are both on the bench right now, and Brooks Lockoff goes to the bench with three fouls with a 214 mark. Stoller leaves that one short. 211 left to go here in the third. Shawnee with the basketball. Berkey is trying to get Austin in the middle. Wayne Trace did a nice job collapsing, taking away that passing lane. Well, I like what they're doing, Nate. They're putting Paisan, their best shooter, on the same side as Miller. They're going to have to come out and guard Paisan if he can knock those down. And if they come out too far, you got Miller going to the, to the post on the left side. Now here's Lynch down in the corner. Shoney now keeping it around the perimeter. Here's Paisan. He gets that good look at three. No good. Tanner Lockoff goes up high to get that basketball. He's going to push it ahead to Stoller. Stoller does a great job running the floor and finishing. Kyle Stoller, the 6'3 junior, runs the floor and gets rewarded with a good pass, and he knocks it in. Lynch looking for somewhere to go with the basketball, drops it off to Paisan. As Austin Miller, he's going to spin in the lane through some contact. Can't get it to go down, but he's going to make another trip to the free throw line. Look, I don't know what he said at halftime, but it, obviously he told Austin, you've got to go to the rim, son. Because Austin's doing a really nice job of getting there, and he's going to the line with the clock stopped. As you can see on the Union Bank instant replay, Austin Miller spins through some contact from Stoller and Lockoff, and he's able to connect on his first free throw. So Austin Miller, three for three here in the quarter from the charity stripe, getting ready to line up his second free throw. Shot is up, and it is good. So we've been saying it now for about a quarter and a half. Shawnee just hanging around, trying to stay within striking distance. They just got to get a couple of timely stops. Yeah, they really, really need to stop right here. They've got a, a quicker Keegan Wilson out on Lockoff, and let's see how that works. Tanner Lockoff's three-point try, no good. Stoller with a huge offensive rebound and a putback for two. That, that's a man right there underneath the bucket going and helping his team out, getting that extra possession and knocking in the deuce. 35 seconds left to go here in the third. 12-point game, Shawnee trying to come away with some points. Wilson directs traffic. 
He's going to reset. Let everybody get back into position here. Looks like Shawnee may be trying to hold for the final shot of the quarter as we have 15 seconds left to go. Wilson waiting for somebody to come through. Has to get rid of it. Lockoff overcommitted. Lynch had a lane but lost the basketball. Brooks Lockoff, he's going to pull up, let the three-pointer go, and he's going to get fouled with .1 seconds left to go here in the quarter. And Brooks Lockoff going to go to the free throw line to shoot three. And King Wilson was emphatic that he didn't foul him. We'll take a look here on the replay. I, I couldn't tell from this vantage point if he got his hand on his arm or, or what he did, but he was pretty emphatic that he didn't foul him. Let's take a look. As you see, Lockoff does a nice job, and it looks like Looking Lockoff – almost initiates that contact, but that's what a shooter needs to do. And unfortunately for Keegan Wilson, just kind of in a bad position that time to get whistled for. Well, once Lockoff goes up in the air, you have to allow him to land, and Keegan Wilson was in his space. When he came down, he came down awkward. They're going to call that every time. So Lockoff connects on the first one. It's his first point of the quarter. Now two for two. So almost a scoreless quarter for Brooks Lockoff as he took almost every second and with a tenth of a second left to go, he's so far two for two from the free throw line with one more to come. He's, he's really good. I'm really impressed. This is my first time getting to see him this year. I'm very impressed with that young man. Lockoff's third free throw is good. Brooks Lockoff, 1,000-point scorer. Got that earlier this season, and you see why. So after three quarters of play, Wayne Trace in control. They're on top, 42-27. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Welcome back to the Palace here at Wayne Trace High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Danny Holbrook. Fourth quarter action just about underway. And every time it seems like Shawnee might be creeping back in and get, setting themselves up to at least give themselves a chance to make a run, Wayne Trace has always come up with an answer. Well. You, 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 can't, you can't have the mistakes that you're having with Shawnee playing against a team like Wayne Trace, who's, who's playing exceptional basketball right now. They've won eight of 11 games. They just upset the league champion in Paulding last night. They're playing on their home floor. You gotta be really good. And so far, Shawnee hasn't. But look, we got a quarter left, and let's see what they can do. I'd love to see Shawnee finish this game strong. Shawnee begins the quarter with the basketball. Gabus. Let's the three-pointer go, no good. Offensive rebound almost for Toby Freiberger as that goes out of bounds. That's something that Shoney has really struggled with tonight as we've not seen them be very successful giving themselves second and third opportunities. Yeah, you saw Freiberger there had the ball and he just dropped it. Uh, it goes out of bounds. And I don't know if it got hit or if he got hit, but he had the rebound and it just went out of bounds. You know, little things like that have been adding up all night. And you just, as a, as a player, you get frustrated, Nate, when that kind of stuff happens and you look at the scoreboard and you're continuously down. It gets very frustrating. So Gabe is out. Guarding Tanner Lockoff. Lockoff picked up his dribble, has to get rid of it. Quick handoff to Brooks Lockoff. He, he's going to find Tyler Davis down low, but they're going to continue just having excellent ball movement, making the extra passes. Really unselfish play right now. Yeah, they're going to take some time off the clock here, and why not? They're just going to move the ball. They're going to settle for good shots. I can't imagine anything outside of the outside of the perimeter, and I imagine they're going to go towards the rim with everybody, just like they're doing right there. Little hesitation move by Brooks. Lockoff leads to an open look for the layup. He's able to connect for two more. He gets to the rim really easy is because of his he, he knows how to use his dribble, and he also knows how he's quick enough he can get there. Three-point answer, though, by Austin Miller. So Shawnee not going away, not ready to resign this one quite yet. Forty-four thirty. Minute and a half has gone by here in the fourth. Well, you see what Wayne Trace is doing right now. They're opening up the lane, and they're going to keep everybody on the side. Coach Linder, he's going to call the timeout. Has had a little bit of miscommunication down there in the corner. So didn't want to lose the possession. So quick 30-second time, timeout for Wayne, uh, for Wayne Trace. 
Right, you see what Coach Linder's doing right there on the on the grease board. He's, he's, he he puts the X's on either side. And he's telling his kids, I'm assuming, you know, stay out of the lane. We're going to spread them out, and we're going to go to the rim. And why not? They're up 14. Everything goes towards the rim. You don't take any bad shots. So Coach Triplett over trying to coach his team up on the bench as well. I mean, it is a 14-point deficit, but if they can get a couple of these shots, they've had some good looks at it. Just not able to, haven't been able to follow them up very well. Now, it seems like when they've gotten the defensive stops, they just haven't been able to cash them in offensively. Yeah, you know, once you get a stop on defense, you, you have to go down and you got to make A. And they just haven't been able to do that. They're at 30 right now. And good grief, you know, this Shawnee offense, you know, they, they've, they've scored, you know, big numbers at times this year. But right now, the offense is just really failing. 6.20 left to go in the game. Wayne Trace on top, 14. Coming out of the timeout. Austin Miller face guarding Stoller. Almost comes up with the turnover as Gavis was able to get his hands on it. Lockoff kicks it over to Stoller. He's going to take the shot. No good. Davis with the rebound. Berkey comes up with the block. And we're going to have a foul. This one, I believe, is going to go on Stoller, and it does. McBride got a nice rebound, and he just got knocked in the head. He <laughs> kind of fell down a little bit. Will McBride, you know, tough kid. So one of the few things that hasn't gone Wayne Trace's, Wayne Trace's way has been the foul situation. As with that foul, they Shawnee now in the one and one. So one of the things they do have going for them, if they can force some, uh, force some fouls, they have an opportunity here to score with the stop or with the clock stop. Yeah, that's a huge advantage right now. But you got to cash in. And Will McGrath, you see him knocking the first one. 44-31. McBride lines up second free throw. It is up and good. McBride's got four tonight. See if Wayne Trace wants to be a little bit more methodical and kill some more time. They're going to go right inside to Stoller, who's working against Miller. And that basketball used every part of the rim that time before finally falling down. Stoller's going to go to the free throw line for the and one. Look, here's what you can't do. If you're if you if the ball goes to the post, you get caught up in the air. You can't allow allow him to get the shot off. If you're going to make the foul, you can't allow him to get the shot off. As you see, Austin Miller on Union Bank instant replay that time just got caught leaning, so he got way up there. But instead of going straight up, he was over. Stoller, nice job of working through that contact and able to make the free throw. Stoller's a good looking player. He's got 13 on the night. This Wayne Trace team is going to be a tough out in the tournament. I'm here to tell you, they're well coached. They can shoot the ball. They run the floor well. And they usually see how much they defend. McBride, nice change of direction in the air, but can't get it to go down. Stoller with the rebound. You know, and another one of the things with this Wayne Trace team is they are young. Oh my goodness, they got one senior on the roster. Yeah. So they are they are built to last for quite a while. They're going to be a problem. And when, when I say on the roster, I'm not talking about starter. They got one on the roster. That's it. And we're singing the praises of Brooke Lockoff tonight for some of the things that he's been able to do this season. He's only a junior. He right. got his thousand yeah. point about a month ago, and he still has an entire year to go. They they have four freshmen on the roster, Nate. They start a freshman. They've got two sophomores. And they've got four juniors. I mean, just a, just a young, young roster. And, and right now they sit at four, or 15 and 6. Well, you know, the next couple of years is going to be fun at Wayne Trace. So have another foul. This one's going to be on Austin Miller. It'll be his second. And it is the team's sixth foul. So one more for Shawnee. We'll put Wayne Trace in the bonus. Miller almost able to get his hands on that basketball. Tanner Lockoff tracks it down. Stoller going to go inside. Works against Austin. Austin tries to block. Can't get it, but Taylor, uh, Tyler Davis, excuse me, comes up with the rebound as Wayne Trace now will get a chance to reset. 4.50 left to go in the game. Shawnee trying to create some extra possessions. Trace does such a nice job in those handoffs, but Nick Paisan from behind on the block. Yeah, good job by Paisan of recognizing his man going to the rim, and he does a nice job of making the block. 
Shawnee almost lost it that time, able to get it back in as Will McBride rattles the three-pointer down. So a full timeout by Shawnee after the made basket as they find themselves down just 12. We will step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Wayne Trace High School, the Palace. And take a look at the upcoming schedule. Marion Local and Rushi Sunday at 4 o'clock. Also have WBL Wrestling at Elida Sunday night at 9 p.m. And then this week, Lipstick Delphus Jefferson Girls Basketball. That's going to be for the NWC. I'll have the call for that one. That should be a great game. Looking forward to that one. And then Wednesday night, USV and Allen East at 8 o'clock on WOSN. And then take a look at the next weekend, Lima Senior, Finley, the rivalry, as that will close the regular season for both of those squads. Elida, Shawnee, another rivalry game. And then Crestview, Van Work as rivalry week will continue. So Shawnee comes out of the timeout on defense, looking to make some stops. As we said, they've done enough to kind of keep themselves into it. And hey, it looked like Wayne Trace was going to run away and hide there for a little bit, but still just a 12-point game. If they can get a stop, get a couple of baskets, they can get this one close here towards the end. Getting some pressure. Oh, a near steal there. Well, almost comes away with it, but it looks like Beckett's going to get called for the foul. I like what they're doing up top. They're going to guard the ball with two and put a little pressure up top. Let's see if it pays dividends for them. So it's going to be up to Wayne Trace now. Make these free throws as Tanner Lockoff takes a trip. He is, excuse me, Tanner Lockoff is two for two here in the game, but hasn't been to the free throw line since the first quarter. Tanner Lockoff is a freshman, and uh, he's a good-looking freshman. Leaves his first free throw short. Shawnee comes up with the rebound. Bazon, he's going to drive. Left hand in. That, that was a great play, Nate. Did you see what he did? He could have took the three because nobody came out, but he took the additional dribbles, went to the rim, and that's a great job by that young man. Nick Bazon giving or taking what Wayne Trace was giving him makes this a 10-point game. Now Shawnee looking for another stop, see if they can't get a takeaway. Trying to double team up near midcourt. Lock off wide open for three. That one's in. That would hurt. That hurts. That makes that lead up to 13. He is a spot up deadly shooter, is he not? You know, and he's one of those shooters too, which makes him that much more dangerous as a quick pass to the inside. Beckett Berkey comes up with two. You know, he hasn't shot in a while. No, he has not. And You're right. to be able just to come up and not have to be, you know, doesn't have to worry about cooling down or being rusty or any of those things, it looks like he's shot 100 threes prior to that. Well, he, <laughs> I thought he was going to take another one. He knows where everybody is on the floor. And he's his, what, the one facet of his game that we haven't talked a lot about is his passing. He can really move the ball around. Another three-pointer rattles in for Brooks Lockoff. As he is trying to close this one out. For Wayne Trace. Well, he's showing you why he's the best player on the floor right now. And there's another steal by Lockoff. Lockoff goes against Miller, drops it off to Tanner Lockoff. He leaves it short. Rebound comes down to Berkey. But he takes it back, going to go up for two. Eight straight points by Brooks. Lockoff pushes this out to a 55 39 lead. And he's going to go to the free throw line for the end one. Just like that, when you need instant offense, he's the guy. And he does it with his defensive prowess. You see right here, he just gets an easy steal because of the length. And he just scores and gets fouled. So Brooke Lockoff stands at the free throw line. And Shawnee brings in five fresh bodies. Kale Winans checking back in for Wayne Trace as well. It looks like Brady Miller going to be coming in for Wayne Trace. How good is this young man? He has really impressed me a lot, Nate. Brooks Lockoff averaging over 20 points a game, 28 so far on the night. Make it 29. As Brooks Lockoff will get checked out of the game, and we're going to have another timeout. Looks like Wayne Trace wants to take a 30-second. As Coach Linder has some new faces into the game, wants to talk about it. We will stay here as well. And Brooks Lockoff, I mean, we've said a lot about him, but, you know, it, it's hard to, to measure sometimes when we're so used to seeing such good players come out of this area. But right now with the way that he plays, I've seen him, I believe this is my third or fourth time this season seeing him. 
and every single time I am incredibly impressed with his scoring prowess. Yeah, I know you talked about him earlier. We've talked about him a lot off the air and just things that you and I have been at. And, you know, and I've told you before, my top five players, I had not seen him play yet. He is in my top five. I'm here to tell you, you know, it's Colin White, Austin Parks, Jack Kanapke. That young man is right there with all of those guys. He's that good. Yeah, and, you know, uh, being just a junior would be uh, <laughs> interesting to see yeah. what he comes back like next year when, uh, with this, uh, as a senior, excuse me. Sure. You know, in that list that you had, you know, Colin White, another one, he's only a junior sure. as well. Jack there Kanapke's are, a junior. <laughs> there are some extremely good young players in this area. Yes, and, well, and let's not forget about Cam Elwer from Delphi St. John's, the just freshman. Just the freshman. Yeah. Is, yep. And we talked about Beckett Berkey here tonight, too, oh, another yes. freshman that shows, you know, a lot of promise as well. So a lot of good basketball going to continue to come out of Northwest Ohio as we're just used to it. This, I mean, <laughs> right. we, I mean, we take it for granted. Other people come in and, and they talk and they see uh, who they come and they want to know, you know, we don't have anything like this here. We don't see players like this year in and year out. And, you know, we're just used to it. Well, and part of it too, Nate, is you, you get a community like Wayne Trace that is made up of small towns and it's a rural area and it's it's everybody goes to the games. Everybody is invested in the school and, and – it's, it's just great when you see a community come together like this. and It's just year after year with Excel at basketball. So two minutes left to go in the game. Wayne Trace in control, 56-39. Shawnee with the basketball. And you see Coach Triplett has taken all of his starters out of the game, and he's got his reserves in. So uh, the starters' nights are done, and uh, he's going to take, uh, take the high road on this one. We mentioned during the pregame, it's Hall of Fame night here at Wayne Trace. I'd like to congratulate the Hall of Fame inductees for Wayne Trace, Mrs. Julia Sin and Mr. Robert Smith. Congratulations to both of them. Had a nice ceremony for them in between the JV and varsity games that we got to witness. It was nice. They honored the educators, and uh, they got a nice crowd here tonight. And this is a beautiful facility. I said it before, but uh, this thing's got a whole 2,500, 3,000 people. It, it's a really nice gym. Yeah, it's a great hidden gem. Zach Noonan, basketball, drops it over to Barker. Boston Barker feeds inside to Lynch. Lynch, he's going to go into the lane, gets it up. Can't get it to go down, but he's going to make a trip to the free throw line. That was a nice job of Lynch getting good position. And when you get down that low into the paint and you get the ball, half the battle's over, and he did a really nice job. So we all know tournament play is right around the corner. We've been around a lot of basketball, Danny. You know, what can a game like tonight mean for both of these teams? Obviously, Wayne Trace, you know, uh, they had a great game last night, fed into tonight. You know, their defense, they played that zone pretty much all night long to success. You saw what Brooks Lockoff could do. Shawnee coming off the big win last night, but a really tough game tonight. You know, to Coach Triplett trying to, uh, still do some coaching and having to pull the starters off and, and, and a bunch of things going on, but we only have two regular seasons games left and then we're in a tournament. Play. Well, what you tell your kids, Nate, if you're, if you're Wayne Trace, you're telling your kids, hey, we got two big wins this weekend. We got a league win against the league champion. We got a big win against a bigger school than us, Shawnee, obviously bigger than Wayne Trace. And if you're Shawnee, you tell your kids, look, we got the league win. We had to go on the road. We didn't play well. We know we can play better. Let's get ready for the tournaments. You can spin positives on both these sides. Keegan Wilson with the drive high off the glass gets that one to rattle down for two under a minute left to go in the game Shoney showing a little bit of pressure here not conceding anything yet trying to make Wayne Trace earn it here's Hudson Meyer as he went baseline gets cut off by Noonan it's been that kind of night for Wayne Trace even when it looks like Shawnee's there to deny, Wayne Trey still finds a way to score. Wilson. Well, what's interesting to note, Nate, is Wayne Trace gives up 44, actually 43.8 <laughs> points a game, and here Shawnee sets at 43. Here's Snipke, CJ Snipke with the shot. That one's no good, loose ball on the floor. Boston Barker comes up with it, gets it over to Sage Ebling. Ebling, he's gonna work around. A little hesitation move, has it blocked though, as Clemens comes up with it, and that is gonna about wrap it up. Wayne Trace is gonna dribble out the rest of the clock, and they're gonna come away with another impressive a victory and go 2-0 on the weekend as they knock off the Shawnee Indians 58-43. We will step aside and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back to Wayne Trace High School. Check out tonight's highlights of the Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And speaking of our Stolly Hustle Award winner, we're being joined by him tonight, Kyle Stoller. Congratulations, a big win tonight. What's a win like this mean for you guys? Uh, this, this win is huge. Going into tournament, we got one more and then we got tournament. The momentum we can bring from this game, it, it, it's, it's really big. You know, you guys had a big win last night. You went into Paulding, you know, got, come, came away with a rivalry win. Having to play on a back-to-back -back night after a game like that, what's it kind of take to get going? Because you guys got off to a great start tonight. Yeah, we, we knew we were going to come out kind of uh, sluggish. We were all tired, but we, we came out and we played with intensity, and I think that set the tone for the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah I think it absolutely did. You know, um, a lot of attention gets uh, brought on to Brooks Lockoff and his scoring ability. But on nights where after he gets going, you know, it seems like you then take over, you do that next step. He gets the outside shooting done, you get the inside stuff done, and tonight you really took over on the inside. What is it like when you know that they're, all that of focus is going to go outside and you're going to get those one-on-one -on -one matchups? Uh, it's great for me. I mean, I've played with Brooks my whole life. He's, he's a great player, one of the best in the area. So when teams focus all their attention out there and I get a one-on-one -on -one in the post, I think that's where I'm at my best. And, I'm, I'm lucky to have a guy like him that makes it so easy for me. Yeah, I definitely agree. Definitely one-on-one -on -one in the post. You seem to win more often than not. You did that tonight. A great game, a well-deserving award. Congratulations, and good luck as we go to the tournament. Yep, thank you. Being rejoined by my broadcast partner, Danny Holbrook, and Kyle Stoller did just about everything for his team tonight. He went to the inside, and he really made it his own offensively on the um, not just the points, offensive rebounds, and then on the other side with the defensive rebounds. We saw him come up with some steals, some blocks. He did just about everything. Well, look, when you got a player like Brooks Lockoff, who's Batman, you need a Robin. And, and Kyle Stoller was Robin tonight. He did a fantastic job, and he did the dirty work. He rebounded. He got second chance points. He defended really well. We saw him run the court really well. He's a really nice player. And, you know, when you have a team that has a 1A and a 1B like this Wayne Trace team does, and you can get a little bit of everything from both of those players, that's what makes them so dangerous. And, you know, we talked about it during the broadcast. They are young. Kyle Soler's one of those young players. But, man, they are so impressive. And when Brooks gets the shooting on the outside, he gets going on the inside. This is a tough team to beat. Well, you just can't, you just can't plan for one guy. They've got a lot of weapons. And Kyle Stoller, when he's playing at his best, like you saw tonight, he doesn't need to be great. He got 13 points, but he got huge rebounds. And he ran the floor and defended really well. Yeah, he's like one of those uh, proverbial glue guys. He is, every, every, every team yeah. needs one, and Kyle Stoller definitely is that for this club. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at the Palace. I'd like to thank our crew, everybody back in the truck and working the cameras. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us at night in and night out. One final time from Wayne Trace High School. The Raiders knock off the Indians. We appreciate everybody for tuning in and have a great night, everybody.